As physician Robert Schilling quotes, even though magnetic resonance imaging has been a significant advance in the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, the findings are not 100% specific, and cannot be relied upon to differentiate MS from B12 deficiency or any other condition. Unfortunately, most doctors rule out B12 deficiency in patients with suspected MS, simply by ordering a CBC test, which can be grossly inaccurate. Other doctors who include a serum B12 test, typically don't acknowledge deficiency or offer treatment when the serum B12 is in the low end of the already too low reference range. This serves as an injustice to the patient. In addition, Physicians don't routinely use other B12 markers such as methylmalonic acid, homocysteine, or hollow TC to assist in diagnosis. Also, the serum B12 test can show normal or even high B12 levels in markedly deficient patients, because the body may have difficulty absorbing or utilizing B12 for various reasons, such as 1. Malabsorption some people may have difficulty absorbing B12 from the food they eat due to digestive problems, such as celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, or a lack of intrinsic factor, a protein that helps the body absorb B12 from food. 2. Medications. Certain medications can interfere with B12 absorption or utilization, such as proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, which are used to suppress stomach acid, and metformin, which is used to treat diabetes. 3. Genetic factors, some people may have genetic mutations that affect the way their bodies absorb or use B12, such as mutations in the transcobalamin 2 gene. 4. Increased demand, in some cases, the body may require more B12 than what is being consumed, such as during pregnancy, or in people with certain medical conditions, leading to B12 deficiency despite normal or high levels in the blood. Unfortunately, the results can be catastrophic leading to neurological and psychiatric disorders, and fatality. Case in point, doctors told a patient in her late 50s that she had MS, even though the disease typically strikes people below 50. One doctor gave her monthly B12 shots for years, during which time her symptoms stabilized, and she lived an everyday happy life. But a new doctor discontinued them around her 72nd birthday. She deteriorated drastically over the next five years, finally arriving in the emergency room suffering from dementia and respiratory failure. Tests revealed clear evidence of B12 deficiency. Other blood markers showed low serum B12, low folate, low B6, elevated MMA, and high homocysteine. At that point, it was too late to save her. She was completely bedridden and eventually developed bed sores and severe blood infections she would spend the remainder of her life in an institution under hospice care. But, sadly, this woman's case is far from an isolated anomaly. Robert Schilling wrote in 1995. Many experienced hematologists have seen patients with severe permanent neurologic damage, because the B12 deficiency was mistaken for another disorder, such as multiple sclerosis, diabetic neuropathy, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or even Guillain-Barre syndrome. One of Schilling's cases involved a woman diagnosed with MS eight months earlier by another doctor. The tests ordered by Schilling revealed conclusively that the woman suffered from a B12 deficiency and did not have multiple sclerosis. Similarly, Dr. Eric Norman reported in the year 2000, that of the six young women his research team diagnosed with B12 deficiency, three were initially suspected of having multiple sclerosis. These three women's original doctors were puzzled. The diagnosis was delayed because of MS and B12 deficiency similarities, and because their patients were young. However, Dr. Norman comments, this population deserves further evaluation since it has not been considered prone to B12 deficiency. Correct treatment of these six patients resulted in a nearly complete recovery for two women, and partial recovery for one other. Unfortunately, the extent of improvement in two other women could not be measured since the treatment had just begun when the report was published, and the last woman had yet to develop significant neurologic symptoms. How many similar cases of B12 deficiency are misdiagnosed as MS? We don't know. However, it is clear in the medical literature that the problem is not uncommon. Is it B12 deficiency or multiple sclerosis? Laura was just 21 when she fractured her leg. 
It healed, but afterward, it felt numb, and she found walking getting harder and harder. Then her fingers began tingling, and she started dropping objects frequently. Soon her right foot began dragging when she walked. A doctor checked her serum B12 level, which was reported as normal but was at the low end of the already too low end of range. So her result came in at 275 pg ml, indicating a deficiency in reality, but not on paper. She was also anemic and her red blood cells were enlarged, two more signs of B12 deficiency. Laura's bone marrow test appeared normal. Reviewing these findings, her doctor told her the bad news, she had multiple sclerosis, MS, a tragic diagnosis for a young woman. Barely out of her teens, Laura faced a life burden by a crippling disease that might eventually leave her paralyzed. However, six years later, Laura found out her doctor was wrong. When she turned 27, she was hospitalized for increasing weakness and abnormal gait. A new bone marrow test showed abnormalities consistent with B12 deficiency during her stay. A repeat B12 test performed at this time was reported as normal but it wasn't normal. The result was 180 pg ml, indicating a deficiency, but this lab's reference range was from 160 pg ml to 1018 pg ml. 180 pg ml is far too low. Her iron deficiency anemia worsened, and her red blood cells were still enlarged. A new doctor reviewed Laura's history from birth, spotting her early delays in walking and reading and her poor coordination, as well as her mother's two unsuccessful pregnancies, one ending in a miscarriage, and the other in a stillbirth. In her mind, Laura's current symptoms and history added up not to multiple sclerosis but to a familial form of B12 deficiency. Further tests showed that she suffered from a hereditary defect of B12 metabolism called cobalamin G mutation, CBLG, a diagnosis her previous doctors had missed for 27 years. Cobalamin G mutation, CBLG, typically presents as severe megaloblastic anemia during the first few weeks of life. The anemia responds entirely to treatment with high doses of B12. After that, however, the neurologic manifestations can react more slowly and not always thoroughly. Laura's doctor started her on daily B12 shots and gave her another medication, oral betaine, to normalize the high homocysteine levels caused by her inborn error of B12 metabolism. As a result, her weakness lessened, and she began walking more quickly over just a short time. But according to the physician who reported her case in the New England Journal of Medicine, she continued to suffer from permanent neurologic damage, a legacy of more than a quarter century of misdiagnosis. Laura's case is another example of why the accepted normal range for serum B12 must be changed, and why doctors must stop treating tests and start treating patients who express classic symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part 3 of B12 deficiency or multiple sclerosis, coming soon.